Welcome to Camp Constitution Radio with your host, Hal Shirtliff. This show is heard on WBCQ, The Planet, every Monday night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And I'd just like to say that camp, our week-long family camp, ended last Sunday, and we had a wonderful time. Uh, it was our, our best attended camp we had in the seven camps we've held since we formed Camp Constitution, the first one being in 2009. Tom DeWees uh, was one of our guest instructors, and he did a phenomenal job. He taught a couple of classes, one of them dealing with his probably the topic that he's most known for, Agenda 21. And he really related to the young people, too, the way he did it. He didn't show a bunch of PowerPoint presentations and such. He just engaged the whole class and sort of explained how it affects them and how local people at the local level and a lot of unelected bureaucrats are the ones that are bringing it into the communities. And then, of course, some practical applications as, as to how to get rid of it in your community and what to look for. He also did a great class on Economics 101, and again, it was in an engaging manner. He didn't just talk about a bunch of dry uh, dry academic definitions and so forth, but it really resonated with the youngsters they did, it with, and the adults too. And we were very glad to be able to bring him into Ringe, New Hampshire. And some of you um, may have heard him on this show a few months ago. It's archived on YouTube. Back in about a year and a half ago, Ringe is a little town in the uh, sort of the end of Cheshire County. And about two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, a handful of uh, residents finding out about Agenda 21 through uh, someone like me and a few others were able to um, educate people in the community. Uh, We're talking about a town of about 5,000 or maybe a little bit less. And in five months, they jettisoned uh, several years of efforts by those promoting Agenda 21. So, uh, in, indeed, uh, we got a chance to – Tom got a chance to speak to his uh, – to, to the Ringe and Jaffrey, New Hampshire Republican Club on that Monday of camp in the evening. It went very, very well. And Tom basically said what they did in Ringe was uh, something the whole country should uh, do. Now, Tom – uh, had some good handouts, but he also uh, had a book that he's recently published. Now tell me I was wrong, and I'm just going through it now and halfway through reading it. And what it was is a collection of his newsletters, and uh, it's it's from the 90s onward, uh, talking about goals 2000 and some of the policies that are being pushed by the the, um, the Bush administration. This would be uh, George W. Bush and the Clinton administration, and how Republicans have just eagerly embraced Democrat proposals, the school to work, the, um, those types of programs. And anyway, Tom is, um, again, one of the premier or most informed opponents of Agenda 21. And you can visit his website at the AmericanPolicyCenter.org. And I highly recommend you get hold. He's got lots of his materials archived. And he's definitely a great resource and, I would say, a national treasure. We are very pleased to uh, be able to bring him on our field trip to the Tea Party Museum in Boston. Uh, Tom does travel the country quite a bit, giving presentations in states, all all 50, I think all 50 states, if not pretty close. And I think he's even been invited to Canada. And anyway, uh, but he said to me he doesn't really have a lot of time to – sort of smell the roses and see some of the uh, historic sites, but he had a chance to visit the Tea Party Museum in Boston, where we took a uh, took an all-day field trip between that and the State House of Massachusetts. We also had Mrs. Chris Ann Hall, actually her husband, and who's a minister, a pastor, and her son, their son, Colton. They had a wonderful time. We have a great program for his age group. I think he's about 10 or 11. How old is he, Emily? He's at nine, nine or ten. Anyway, we have something called Patriot Camp. Now, Patriot Camp was a um, something that was created about seven or eight years ago by a couple of ladies. I think they're from Ohio. Forgive me if I got the state wrong. And it's so almost like a, a vacation Bible school format with this round robin in this various stations, and the youngsters will go to one for, you know for the course of a week. We had to modify it to a certain extent 
And then we, we did some additions, but it was very nice to see these young people learn about our history, uh, our proud um, Christian background, and some of the great uh, patriots, and present it to them in a, in a format that they could appreciate. And we had some special guests, and along with uh, Mrs. Chris Ann Hall and Tom DeWeese, we had we had Garrett Lear, the patriot pastor, and his wife, Kathy, who uh, they were in colonial costume, Garrett. Is a six foot seven, uh, sort of the founder of the the more recent or the revived Black Robe Regiment. These were the members of the clergy back at the time of the War of Independence that wore the black robes, and they were really the uh, the vanguard of the War of Independence because, you know, they they preached um, they preached freedom and liberty and sacri- sacrificing, uh, and they were the, uh, the they were the one of the reason, main reasons why we uh, won the battle because we have the support of the clergy. Today, unfortunately, very few members of the clergy will be found advocating righteousness, opposing injustice, unless it's a left-wing side. You see a lot of members of the clergy will fly the rainbow flag in their church, and they'll promote Obamacare, and they promote all of the uh, abortion and uh, homosexuality. And though many of the churches that oppose these kinds of things have been silent by the 501c3s, uh, this tax status, uh, that they dare speak out against these things. They will uh, be audited by the IRS, and the members of their church will give them as much money, et cetera, et cetera. It's really disgusting. But thankfully, there are some, and I like to think the number is growing. And by the way, it better grow, because uh, especially with a Supreme Court decision that made it uh, made the, every state in the United States a compelling interest to promote the homosexual agenda. So anyway... The camp, in addition to the uh, great classes, we had uh, Tom Moore, who's been a guest on the show a few times. He's the co-host of the show. He got a good, some good history lessons of the Civil War. We had uh, author Dan McGonigal discuss, uh, these were advanced classes too, discuss the, um, the history of the militia in the United States and the fact that militia, the word is not a bad word. The M word is not a bad word since it's in the Constitution about six or so times and in many state constitutions. And, Good! Uh, You're Hector singing it with us! Adopted. And we had, uh, let's see, we had Catherine White. Who was uh, yeah, we're in the Vermont Academy. 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 Yeah, we're in the USA was just starting out in a whole brand new country. So our people spelled it out the things that we should be. They call it the Constitution. It's been helping us guide our government ever since when they obey it. The first part is called the preamble. And it goes like this. We the people in order to form a more perfect union. Establish justice and show domestic tranquility. Available to Good! You're singing it with us! Oh, we had, uh, we had some uh, one uh, uh, one of our counselors, Lisa Mazzarella from Boston, she teaches line dancing and ballroom dancing for Seattle. In I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. USA was just starting out in a whole brand new country. So our people spelled it out the things that we should be. They call it the Constitution. It's been helping us guide our government ever since when they obey it. The first part is called the preamble. And it goes like this. We the people in order to form a more perfect union. Establish justice and show domestic tranquility. Not is pretty close to that, and uh, even though it's uh, 200 feet above sea level, it's still 
challenge. Society, and I thought he was one of the most uh, outgoing, <laughs> inspirational <laughs> men I've met. Beautiful. And uh, he's never been to, I don't think he's ever been to this camp, I uh, don't believe, although he's helped support it over the years with his financial his generosity. Uh, Mr. Kingsbury has been, uh, as you see, he's got a uniform on. And you see that, those ribbons? That one in the middle, that's because he got hurt during combat. It's called a purple heart. And he's a World War II veteran. And of course, we do have a, uh, we do have a good in the the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 under General Patton. And uh, we have something in common. I, I didn't fight under General Patton's son, but I served under him, and he served under uh, the dad. Mr. Kingsbury has been a long time chap leader of the John Birch Society, wherever state he lives, New Orleans, or Louisiana, at one point, and now in New Hampshire. He's run for office, and one of these days he's going to win. He was a gubernatorial candidate for the Libertarian Party. I think he ran for Congress. He ran, he's currently running for state rep as a Republican. Let's give a nice warm hand. Hal's a great guy. It's wonderful to work with Hal. I'm looking at the audience here and I think you're wonderful. It's wonderful to see you here and it's wonderful to be here. We're going to be uh, having a table at the Cheshire Fair. So why am I here? Uh, Cheshire Fair. I do have an answer. Uh, that county. Uh, uh, this uh, coming week, uh, maybe Wednesday to Sunday, seconds. and if you happen uh, to be here in, in the area, you can come to Swanton, New Hampshire. And then appoint a second lieutenant in the area. The Army, you want to stop United by States. and uh, visit I our people. I solemnly swear We've been that I will support uh, and defend at, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And it will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties and other things. of the office of which I'm about to enter. In addition to our camp, of course, we do so help me God. We did a parade uh, not too long ago, Flag Day. Government. And, um, and that's Hampshire. officially the uh, sorry, Oklahoma Hampshire, the town of the Army of the United States, so out, so help me uh, 500 God. constitutions. We handed out 500 because we only had, I think we had 1,000 or 2,000. Rifle in for General Patton. It was unusual, to say the best. Um, copies of the camp in the particular so it was a company I was time. in, there were anyway, 3,000 men back to our, in uh, camp, we had, uh, the infantry division that are in the rifle uh, company. For, and in my division, 4,000 of them had uh, trench foot. Trench foot in those days meant the so amputation of one or both week, feet. And this infuriated General Patton. So he came to our division so and he... Inside them. Addressed our, paper each of our regiments, regiment by regiment. He ordered the officers have, to have dry uh, socks brought to up to us with every day's meal. From that time on, we didn't have and the, uh, the, uh, this year's newspapers. There's well he was a one uh, officer that cared for the men in the reserve camp. camp. Uh, the there's and there's also a dozen other stories I could tell. We have campers right about some of the best that they've participated in. Anyway, but, and, and a new camp, a uh, newspaper editor this year, and, uh, Patton, and uh, anyway, we're hoping that, that, that he'll, he'll be able to return. About him, and, uh, knows about we, the slapping incident. We'll enjoy the camp. And he's so he's in so visiting, visiting a hospital. Page on camp uh, and he found this uh, next year's camp. Soldier at the entrance of one of the surgical board tents. Hospitals were in at the uh, Toilet Retreat the, uh, Center, we're lining up. We've got a couple said, of guests who we've invited, and we've we got confirmation as soon as we do. And, we'll let, uh, let you know. A few words but I'd like to change the topic a little bit to talk about uh, the Helmet. Confederate flag uh, issue. Now, a recent so development. Been criticized for that ever now, we've told more, uh, many people saying but, uh, this is nothing more than a distraction. Uh, distraction to keep our eye off more important issues Europe, like uh, what Obama's Obama is doing uh, around the world, what he isn't shot. doing, and the, now, the, uh, one of those these ridiculous transatlantic partnerships and trans-Pacific partnerships. And I would say maybe to a slight extent, this is more sensational than something that that's so those are what I think it's not as important as 
destroying our sovereignty, but Very clearly, uh, the flag uh, issue is important. It's a cultural issue. Now, I am not a Confederate. I II. am a Yankee. My, uh, you have at least one shirt left that was a uh, Confederate who fought on uh, Tennessee. For day of combat for but uh, men. my lineage, we have many uh, Civil War uh, shirtless fought in the Civil War, several lost their men lives. My son Nathaniel so is named after an ancestor of mine. Nathaniel Bradstreet shirtless who was killed. He was a Massachusetts volunteer. He was an officer. He actually the uh, knew Society, the, uh, the commander, Robert Gould Shaw, uh, of the 54th Regiment, the All Black Regiment. The so um, the so I'm, not a, I'm not a Confederate, uh, in that, and, but I can occurred, understand. I, I see uh, the Confederate battle that, flag. I don't get upset about it. Um, I understand uh, why South Carolina put it, started Kennedy producing it back in the 1960s. And I know that there may be some racist groups that carry this flag. Uh, uh, but you can see racist groups that carry the U.S. flag. ABC, You'll see NBC, communist groups carry the U.S. flag. I uh, get some City, footage of the a big communist the rally at Madison Square Garden where the they the street, probably hold up big pictures thought. of George Washington and, and Abraham Lincoln and, and carry the American flag. And, and if you want to really get technical about it, look at the U.S. flag. Well, we had slavery since July 4th, 1776. At these uh, up until uh, the 13th as Amendment, as and some of these Northerners that are so smug and righteous that, that uh, they are against slavery, they have a proud history. Every remember, state that, that on, signed that, uh, every delegate for those, the 13th states, that signed uh, the Declaration of Independence, they were all slave states in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, New Jersey, and all these Northern states. Was That's the way I felt at that time. Uh, and, uh, it so, was gradually eliminated in the uh, in most of the northern states. Massachusetts <sighs> being the effort. first. Vermont came it's in as the first free state. I think uh, it was 1791 at 92. But uh, Massachusetts Far never had a large slave population to begin with. It really uh, slavery wasn't as important to the economy as it was say in South Carolina, where you had a large percentage of the population of numbers, the author of the slave population. And uh, if you want to also look at that, during the Civil uh, War, there were some states that were part of the Union that were slave states. Delaware, for example. Uh, Delaware and uh, Maryland, the the two, uh, West Virginia came into the Union in the that slavery was in Connecticut. So, it was like gradual you, emancipation. Uh, okay. um, As and there was still slaves up until the, the 1840s, late 1840s. That in front of another. That's why the the, 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 uh, the the Amazon, there has been a great movie another. about the Amazon. Yeah. It, was, uh, you? it was put brought into New London, the, uh, Connecticut, because uh, it was so a slave state. Where New York had ended slavery so, by the 1820, uh, Connecticut still had slavery up until 1848. New Jersey still had uh, a couple of slaves by the time of the Civil War. So. The notion that the Confederate flag stands for slavery, you can make the same case that the U.S. flag stands for slavery. When it comes to having grandchildren, you know, the Civil War is over, uh, half a million people died, uh, but recently, a black Confederate supporter, uh, a black Confederate flag activist died in a car crash at the flag rally. Uh, so now we have murder. So now it's not just a distraction, but if you have to support the Confederate the flag, or the idea that people should be free to fly it. You are now, uh, you my story for the show. His name was Anthony Kirby. He was a 49-year-old person in Oxford, Mississippi. He was a 50-year-old person in the road and killed at the end of the town on late Sunday morning. So I mean, he's shown here this picture of him in 2000. He actually wrote a book called Why I Fly. Flag. And I thought he was and one of the most uh, outgoing, of inspirational men I've met. And uh, Civil War. he's never been to, I don't he think he's ever been to this camp, uh, I don't believe, although he's helped support it over the years with his financial generosity. Uh, Mr. Kingsbury has been, uh, he's used to see he's getting into the full mind. You see why those ribbons? Uh, Mr. Kingsbury is one of the middle, that's because he got hurt during the combat. He's still a perfect heart. And he said, we're not going to be able to do that. He's a World War II veteran. 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 He's a
He fought under General Patton, and uh, we have something in common. I, I didn't fight under General Patton's son, but I served under him, and he served under uh, the dad. Mr. Kingsbury has been a long time chaplain leader for John Burke Society. Wherever state he lives, we will link to Louisiana at one point, and now in New Hampshire. He's run for office, and one of these days he's going to win. He was a gubernatorial <laughs> candidate for the Libertarian Party. I think he ran for Congress. He ran for Congress. He's running for state rep as a Republican. Let's give a nice warm hand to Pal's a great guy. It's wonderful to work with Pal. I'm looking at the audience here, and I think you're Harry wonderful. War, Robert, it's you wonderful to see you here. time, Harvey explained, are you marching for freedom? Uh, Battle flag stands for freedom and states' rights. So why am I here? Uh, and I do have I an recently posted a, uh, a, um, an article. It was actually a sermon. It was uh, a sermon done by a minister, a pastor, and I can't remember his name offhand. And it was uh, he, he gave permission to, to you know, permission to reproduce it. That I will it was called the Truth of the Federal Battle Flag, and I think this was about enemies, uh, 20 years old. There's a little booklet. You know, it's on my screen page, and I think and I'm going to put it on the same. Constitution page. If not, I'll do it soon. Freely, anyway, back uh, to the article. See, uh, at the, of the Birmingham rally, Barnum publicly called. Oh, okay. well he, uh, faithfully discharged the duties. Okay, he argued in 2000. We currently live under a psychological enter. form of reconstruction. Whites so are made to feel guilty for the sins of their ancestors. And Fox are made to feel downtrodden, which keeps all of us from communicating. The political correctness of today is killing the pride of the people. At the Bur so Birmingham rally, Barnum publicly burned. Now, this would be if Barnum was uh, uh, leading the Publicly burned your NAACP and the charge and discussed the negative of the Confederate flag. The best. Police were forced uh, to intervene and arrest several counter, in the counter protesters who attempted to attack Barnum, Kirby, and other folks that are black Americans. So you see, not just a question of free speech, now you will be physically attacked and in my division, if you're black and you dare get off that left-wing white plantation that the white feet. liberals have set up for you. You see, General you're allowed to think certain things, but not get out of that ramp. Well, I have a lot of respect for these people. Each of our they regiments, regiment like by regiment, and uh, bullies, by the way. ordered the officers uh, to have dry socks brought up to us with every day's uh, meetings. Uh, Kirby was the author of Why Are We the Confederate Flag, written by a black man. Uh, wearing a Confederate um, uniform and waving the Confederate a flag out of the town's court, he would often attack the track in audience for his talks on the subject of the history of the Civil War. Several years ago, Harvey told his brother Harry that he should not worry about those who shouted them in anger as they marched along Highway 90, waving the Confederate flag. He was yellow out to warn you to confront him with the word that he needs to say. But Harvey was correct in assuring his brother was going to do the investigation. So what happened was that he was driving back from the rally with um, uh, and he found this, this lady um, uh, that he met and soldier the, the uh, a group of a uh, carload of, the of black people were forced him off the road <laughs> and died in the accident. Uh, and he, so uh, they have him still looking for leave. Said, what are you so doing so, here? So that's, said, uh, that's a little bit more than and, just a distraction uh, and I'm sure these kinds of things. But folks, we are just like a culture uh, war is getting blood. Uh, whether it be the, uh, the homosexual so agenda, where uh, bakers are uh, ran, ran out but, of the uh, state, the power of the state is, uh, is harnessed by the militant uh, in Europe, narcissistic homosexuals who uh, talk about liberty and equality and freedom, now, and they want rights, guys, uh, but if you dare oppose them, and you will be um, run out of business and destroyed. But I think that uh, public opinion will be on our side. Shot. At some so point, I think more and more people will see well, Pat, what's going on. Um, and uh, very clearly, should, uh, shaken uh, out of their, uh, their General went a long way to winning action, World but War II. take responsible action um, officially. And, 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 and stop this, this casualties this nonsense. But anyway, uh, for thousand men. getting back to the camp, the other I was generals in Europe, my children, my, children, my, my whole family participates in the camp. For a thousand men my, uh, per day of combat. My son, so my opinion, Nathaniel, who's turned 18 as for this year, was a counselor for the first the time. Other generals in Europe. And uh, my daughter Emily was a junior uh, camper, and my, as far my daughter Georgia, who's 21, was also a counselor. And my wife is a counselor. And I say that my 14 year old daughter, Christina, was a junior camper, and she's now 21. She's now 21. Christina was a camper, and she was nominated for the camper. One of the events that occurred. Anyway, 
Uh, it was a wonderful camp program, and uh, we have a, a plan. Um, we put out a business plan not too President long ago last, uh, shot, last fall, which of course stopped where the we country, would like to hire a full-time uh, uh, person, not only to uh, the three major run a, a TV camp, channels, but we'd like ABC, to expand the NBC, program in other CBS, parts of the United States, and maybe even other parts of the world. Our focus would be for the United the street, States, uh, although we would definitely consider doing something like this. We have a great model of what we do at our camp from the, the, uh, from the, the first he day shot by to the last day, the different well, activities, the types of classes, and I was concerned the sort of culture. Report. And we would like to take this as far as and plant other it was camps. A miracle. And it does take some commitment, it takes some financial resources. But I tell you, the Remember, it's definitely worth it. Film file you can make a profound on, uh, impact on the lives of as an agent many, for Cuba, many hundreds, if not uh, the thousands, for Cuba of, of young and people. At our camp, we had a little over 100. Right wing we con had about 94 for a whole week, and, 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 and some visitors from the United States for two days. Some people came early, left early, came late, what have you. But most of the classes will be up on YouTube. Classes for the previous effort. years are up there, so, the and a lot of the fun things we do. Um, Although I'm of the opinion that learning can be a lot of fun too, if the instruction is good. And, far more uh, than and uh, it's interesting. Some of the new campers, what they, there's uh, one a young man. One of the things I'll use, which you may may not accept, or may not accept, not just a little north of the I am uh, this is a reversal of numbers. He said he was so glad to be around people who can actually find numbers. Or people, people have that, interest uh, in that time, things. Big Brother should control uh, one of our campers, every nation in the world. My son is homesick. Uh, that, he was over a little while ago. Opinion, but I'm doing a show on a Sunday, taping it the day before we actually hear it. Thank you so much. Friends uh, back so home, but the friends really can't relate to this. Uh, okay. so, well, that's a your job. In the Army, the only fame I can claim is that you put one foot in front of another. We remember the John Birch Society. The only thing I can claim is I put one foot in front of another. My suggesting you put one foot in front of another. And then maybe there is the advice. Don't take counsel in your fears. Uh, so anyway, so the plan is to have evaluate things, but uh, don't be overwhelmed uh, by what your fears may or may not be. Uh, doing a lot of public relations, and it's just a question of raising the funds to do that. It's always the money, isn't it, when, when it comes to doing um, anything, whether it's a radio and, uh, show or... When it you know, comes we do to have some potential out there, you know, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do something like this very soon. And we'll be able to get on the homeschool circuit. We do a few homeschool shows in the region, and, uh, but we'd like to be able to hit many of them. Not your just knee, uh, the camp model, said, but some of the materials we make available. What did you do and even during the great homeschool days? show, you know, we may not get a whole lot of people to come to the camp, but we reach out to people. And even homeschoolers, a lot of them don't have a good information that we make available. Although, I have to say, homeschoolers are a whole lot more. referred to, what they referred to, and uh, very few people knew it was the Bill of Rights. And that demonstrates the need for our camp program and the need to expand it. So with more help, we'll be able to do more of these kinds of things. We'll have more floats and parades and more tables at, at, at counties and, and fa uh, county fairs and homeschool shows. And God willing, we'll have a few more camps, may, may, maybe many more camps. It, we can do a week-long camp. We can do a weekend camp. It doesn't have to be a week-long camp. No, we can get a nice Friday to Sunday type camp. So we really think the, the sky's the limit. And if you're interested in helping, looking into what we're doing, helping us financially, helping us uh, with your shoe leather, helping us with your uh, your efforts, give us a call. Go to our website, www.campconstitution.net. You see a sponsors page. Many of those sponsors, by the way, are folks that, that, that maybe make banners for us or do printing for us. They're not necessarily financial sponsors. They'll make donations, uh, donate their resources, donate their, uh, their talents, and um, a lot of the money we raise are from the sale of donated materials, books and things of that nature. So um, all kinds of things. And you may have people, maybe you know, maybe you don't have the resources, but you know people that might. So 
copy and paste. Uh, show them what we do. Show them the, the great fun we have, the great wholesome fun we have at camp, and the great instruction that goes on. Let them know. Don't let, don't, don't let this camp be a secret. Uh, help get the word out. Copy and paste this, uh, this show as, as we put it up on YouTube. Uh, go to the YouTube channel at Camp Constitution. And um, this has been Al Shirtliff, your host for Camp Constitution Radio, heard on WBCQ The Planet every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 